Now considering bending about y y axis, we have sigma max of compression about y y axis is equal to m y y upon i y y into x max of compression. Now m y y is nothing but p into e y upon i y y is db cube by 12. I y y is the moment of inertia of the cross section about your centroidal y y axis. And your x max is nothing but half of this width. So b by 2. So upon substituting the values 40 to 10 to the power 3 into 35 upon 16 to 80 cube by 12 multiplied by 80 by 2. So on solving we get the value as 21.87 Newton per mm square. Now due to symmetry your sigma max of tension about yy will also be of same value 21.87 Newton per mm square. Also considering the axial load P, the direct stress sigma D which is nothing but the compressive stress and is given as P by A. So P is 40 into 10 to the power 3 upon A is B into D. So this gives the value as 8.33 Newton per mm square and which is always compressive. So now we determine the stress at point D which is given as sigma B and we know here the stress will be maximum compressive stress and this is given as your direct stress sigma C plus maximum compressive stress due to bending about xx axis plus maximum compressive stress due to bending about yy axis. So now upon substituting the values of sigma c, sigma max of compression about xx axis and sigma max of compression, sorry cut it. Now upon substituting these values, we get stress at point B is equal to the sigma c is 8.33 Newton per mm square. The sigma max of compression about xx axis is 16.67 plus sigma max of compression about yy axis is 21.87. Since all these are compressive, we consider, we consider all positive. So maximum compressive stress comes out to be 46.87 Newton per mm square. Next we determine stress at point E where your stress will be maximum tensile stress. So stress at C is equal to maximum tensile stress and this is given as your compressive stress sigma C minus sigma max of tension due to bending about xx axis minus sigma max of tension due to bending about yy axis. So now upon substituting the values we have 8.33 minus 16.67 minus 21.87 and this gives the value as minus 30.21 Newton per mm square. Since sigma c comes out to be minus so we have tensile stress. So with this a problem is solved. Now we try to determine stress at other two extreme points that is stress at point A and stress at point D. Now stress at point A will be given as your first direct stress which is the compressive stress sigma c. Then there will be a compressive stress due to bending about xx axis so sigma max of compression about xx axis. Also there will be tension due to bending about yy axis so we have minus of sigma max of tension about yy axis. So upon substituting the values we get 8.33 plus 16.67 minus 21.87 so value comes out to be 3.13 Newton per mm square since the value comes out to be positive the resultant stress at point A is compressive similarly we find stress at point C sigma C will be given as your compressive stress sigma C then tensile stress due to bending about xx axis so we have minus sigma max of tension about xx axis plus there will be compressive stress due to bending about yy axis so we have sigma max of compression about yy axis so upon substituting the values we have 8.33 minus 16.67 plus 21.87 and on solving we get the value as 13.53 newton per mm square so again we see since the value comes out to be positive the resultant or total stress at point C is compressive. So we see that from all these four points only at point D there is a tensile stress whereas at all the other points there is a compressive stress. Thanks for watching in 5 minutes.